Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on physical security and environmental controls. Today I'm going to discuss control types, then we're going to move on to physical security, and we're going to conclude with environmental controls. I have a lot of information to give out, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. Of course, we're going to begin by talking about control types. There are three main types of controls that can be used to mitigate security risks. There are administrative controls. These are often called management controls. They're written documentation that is used to help secure systems from risks. Often, administrative controls will be used to help outline the other control types. Then there's technical controls. These are security measures used to control access or reduce risk to any particular resource or asset. They may be digital in nature, as in a firewall, or they may be physical in nature, as in a door lock on a server room. And finally, we have operational controls. They're procedures that are put in place to help ensure that day-to-day -day operations can occur even after a risk event has happened, as in implementing the recovery procedure after a hard drive failure. The categories of control types can be further broken down into what they are designed to achieve. They can be deterrent in nature. They're used to deter an action from being performed, usually by the threat of discipline. Then there are preventative controls. They're used to prevent a security threat from occurring as in locking server room doors to prevent unauthorized access. Then there are detective controls. They're used to detect the occurrence of a risk event, as in a network intrusion detection system detecting a firewall breach. And finally, there are compensating controls. They're used to compensate for any residual risk that may remain after another classification of control has been put into place as in purchasing insurance to safeguard against loss resulting from a data loss event due to a network breach. Now let's move on to physical security. Physical security measures can be used for multiple purposes, including keeping people safe in the workplace. The use of proper lighting and signage can direct employees to emergency exits and or keep them safe at night in the parking lot. Fences and barricades can be used to secure sensitive areas, while guards, used in conjunction with access lists, ensure that only authorized personnel are present, thus creating a safer work environment. Physical security measures can also be used to restrict access to sensitive resources through the use of alarms, as in motion sensors or closed circuit sensors, or through video surveillance. With that covered, let's talk about some specific physical security controls. First up, there are hardware locks. This is keeping assets where they belong. It's a technical preventative control that can be used to keep resources secure. The locks may be simple or they may be more complex. Then there are biometrics. This is making people prove who they are. It's an authentication method that is based on a person's physical attributes, as in their fingerprints, retinal patterns, or voice patterns. Biometrics can also involve physical actions, as in using a person's typing style to authenticate who they are. Radio frequency ID badges, also known as RFID badges, or security tokens can be used to determine the exact location of personnel within a facility. As an added benefit, they can also be used to activate or deactivate electronic door locks. Some work environments require more security than others. One example is the wiring distribution point of IT networks. Allowing unlimited access to the wiring distribution room is an extreme example of a security risk. Anybody would have access to all of the network's communication and or equipment thus making them the actual owner of the network, even if you think that you still are. In highly sensitive, risk-intolerant environments, it may be necessary to implement a man trap to control access to specific areas of the organization. A man trap often involves two locking doors with a space in between them. 
a person is allowed through the first door, which then locks behind them, but not the second door until after additional verification has occurred. This traps the person until authorization is granted. And now let's conclude with some environmental controls. A network's health and safety can be affected by more than just a network interface failing or a possible security breach. Network and systems administrators also need to be concerned about environmental factors, and some of those factors include electrical power, heat, and humidity. A properly designed HVAC system can aid in protecting critical components from damage or loss of functionality. This is especially true when they are designed with a hot and cold aisle approach. With this approach, the equipment's air intakes are pointed towards AC vents, while the equipment's exhaust fans are pointed toward the AC system's cold air intake, thus giving you a hot aisle for the exhaust and a cold aisle for the intake. One of the environmental controls that should be in place are power monitors. These are system and tools that can be used to evaluate the amount of and the quality of the electrical power being delivered to your IT systems. Power monitoring is often deployed with or alongside an uninterruptible power supply or UPS. Humidity monitors should also be put in place. These monitors allow administrators to control the humidity levels within an IT facility. Some thought also needs to go into fire suppression systems. These need to be specifically designed for the resources that they protect. While a halon system may be able to extinguish a fire in a cubicle farm, they are probably not the appropriate type of fire suppression for that place. And finally, there's electromagnetic interference shielding, or EMI shielding. In some work environments, it may be necessary to use shielded cabling to protect networks from EMI. That concludes this session on physical security and environmental controls. I began by talking about the various control types, then I moved on to physical security controls, and I concluded with a brief discussion on some environmental controls. On behalf of PACE IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.